Welcome back. In this module, we're going to be talking about the endocrine system. So let's get into it. Let me just move myself over. <laughs> so the endocrine system is responsible for secreting the hormones and other molecules that regulate the entire body in both the short and long term. The hypothalamus and pituitary gland coordinate to serve as the neuroendocrine control center. The hormone secretion is triggered by a variety of signals, including hormonal signals, chemical reactions, and environmental cues. Only cells with specific receptors can benefit from hormonal influence. So steroid hormones trigger gene activation and protein synthesis in some target cells, and protein hormones change the activity of existing enzymes in target cells. So if we look over here, we can see all different glands of the endocrine system. So up in the brain, we have the hypothalamus and the pineal gland, the thalamus, the pituitary gland. And we know that the pituitary and the hypothalamus serve as the neuroendocrine control center, which kind of makes sense, right? Because like neuroendocrine, it's in the brain, neuro. We have our thyroid, which is in the throat here. We have the thymus, it's a little bit lower. We have the pancreas here. Remember, we have the head and the tail. And we have the adrenal glands, which sit right on top of the kidneys. Down in our uterus, we have the ovaries. And if it is in a female, and if it is in a male, we have the testes. Also coming back up to the throat, the thyroid gland, if we zoom in, you're going to have the parathyroid gland on the posterior sides of the thyroid. All right, so the endocrine system consists of the body's hormone producing glands and the hormones. A network of glands that produces hormones or chemical messengers with the function of controlling growth. So for example, growth hormone, proceeds from the action of the hypothalamus. Hormones can also control sexual development. So for example, estrogen made in the ovaries helps the female reproductive system develop and controls the menstrual cycle. Hormones will also control metabolism. So for example, thyroxin from the thyroid gland regulates basic metabolic rate regulating blood glucose so when food is eaten and glucose enters the blood the pancreas releases insulin into the blood insulin allows cells to take in glucose without insulin the body cells cannot take in this glucose and hormones typically are secreted from a gland and travel through the bloodstream when a hormone reaches its target it changes activity structure or behavior so if we look over on the side here, we can see different hormones, what gland they come from, and their function. So we have the growth hormone in the hypothalamus and pituitary for growth, oxytocin and vasopressin from the hypothalamus for uterine contractions, thyroxin from the thyroid gland for metabolism, insulin and glucagon for the pancreas for blood sugar regulation, cortisol in the adrenal cortex for stress and metabolism, and estrogen and testosterone in the ovaries and testes for like sexual hormone type things. All right, so the endocrine gland functions. So this is the body with all the different endocrine glands. We have the testes, ovaries, pancreas, um, adrenals, thyroid, pituitary, hypothalamus, pineal, parathyroid, thymus. You can see uh, there's some other things on here like the kidneys and stomach. Those are not endocrine. That's why the box is kind of uh, faded. That's just to show you what those structures are so you can understand like, oh, the adrenals are on top of the kidneys and things like that. The other thing I really liked about this chart is it really gives you a lot of detail on you know, the testes creates testosterone, that's the hormone, and what it's used for is male development. And the adrenals are creating epinephrine, aldosterone, cortisol, and sex hormones. Epinephrine is used to increase heart rate. Aldosterone is maintains blood pressure. Cortisol stabilizes blood glucose. And sex hormones 
are related to male and female function. So we'll go through this side first. The adrenal cortex monitors blood sugar levels, helps in lipid and protein metabolism. The adrenal medulla controls cardiac function, raises blood sugar, and controls the size of the blood vessels. So those are all the things we just covered. The thyroid gland helps regulate metabolism and functions and growth and development. We find that over here, our thyroid is related to releasing the hormones T3 and T4 for energy and calcitonin for calcium from bones. The parathyroid regulates calcium levels. So if we come over here, parathyroid releases PTH, which has to do with cal taking calcium from the bones. The pancreas islet raises and lowers blood sugar activated in carbohydrate metabolism. So if we come over pancreas, releases both insulin and glucagon. Insulin is going to lead to the uptake of glucose, while glucagon is going to raise the blood sugar. The thymus gland plays a role in the immune response. So if we come over to the thymus, it releases thymosins, which has to do with immune function. The pineal gland has an influence on daily biorhythms and sexual activity, so pineal releases melatonin, which has to do with our sleep cycle. Pituitary gland plays a role in growth and development, so we come over to the pituitary. This releases a lot of stuff. So we have PRL, has to do with milk production, growth hormone for growth, ACTH has to do with stress hormones, LH regulates sex hormones, FSH has to do with sperm and egg production. So remember we talked about these and we talked about the ovarian cycle. We talked about these two types of hormones. It also releases oxytocin, which has to do with labor contractions, and ADH, which is a vasopressin and water balance. The kidneys have an antidiuretic hormone, which tells the kidneys how much water to convert. And going back up to the adrenal cortex, we had talked about that here as well. So I think that covered all of them. But yeah, I think this is just a really good diagram to review all of those different hormones. So there is a big one in case you guys wanted to like print this out to study. So we just went over all of this. All right, so now the pancreas. So regions of the pancreas called islet of Langerhans contain endocrine hormones producing cells. They are primarily made up of insulin producing beta cells and glucagon releasing alpha cells. The major hormones produced in the pancreas are insulin, which control carbohydrate metabolism by lowering the amount of sugar glucose in the blood. Insulin also affects fat metabolism and can change the liver's ability to release stored fat. It also uh, has the hormone glucagon, which controls carbohydrate metabolism. Glucagon has the opposite effect of insulin in the body. It uses it to increase blood sugar glucose levels. The level of insulin and glucagon are balanced to maintain the optimum level of blood sugar throughout the day. The exocrine glands of the pancreas produce digestive juices. Senar cells, functional units of the exocrine pancreas, it synthesizes, stores, and secretes digestive enzymes. Alpha cells are endocrine cells that are found in the islet of Langard in the pancreas. Alpha cells secrete the peptide hormone glucagon in order to increase glucose levels in the bloodstream. And beta cells are a type of cell found in the pancreatic islet that synthesizes and secretes insulin and amylin, and delta cells secrete the hormone somastatin. So if we look over here, we have our pancreas, we have our liver. So in the pancreas, you have glucagon and insulin. It will release those. Insulin will stimulate glycogen formation, stimulate glucose uptake from the blood, from the tissue cells, and therefore lower blood sugar, where glucagon will stimulate glycogen breakdown because remember the glycogen is in the liver and it will raise the blood sugar so again if you have high blood sugar this is the path that's going to low if you have low blood sugar it promotes glucagon release and it raises the blood sugar so that is again how the body maintains homeostasis and this is just an 
islet of Langerhans cell within the pancreas and you have your different types of cells so your alpha cell uh, beta cell delta cell connective tissues so just remember uh, alpha is glucagon beta is insulin and delta is somostatin so the thyroid and parathyroid so the thyroid and parathyroid glands are located in the neck just below the larynx the basic function of the thyroid gland is to regulate metabolism the thyroid gland secretes the hormone thyroxine thyroidiathrin and calcitonin thyroxine and triodiathrin increases metabolism and calcitonin decreases blood calcium by storing calcium in bone tissue the hypothalamus directs the pituitary gland to secrete thyroid stimulating hormone, which stimulates the thyroid gland to release these hormones as needed throughout a negative feedback mechanism. The parathyroid glands are small, are four small glands that are embedded in the posterior side of the thyroid gland. The parathyroid gland secretes parathyroid hormone, which can increase blood calcium by moving calcium from the bone to the blood. So again, we have the thyroid with the parathyroid, the hypothalamus is up here, anterior pituitary gland, and this just kind of shows you have a negative feedback from the thyroid to the anterior pituitary gland, and these are what gets released. The functions of the male reproductive system are to produce, maintain, and transfer sperm and semen into the female reproductive tract to produce and secrete male hormones. All right, and that is the end of the endocrine module. And make sure to do the worksheet and take the quiz and make sure to study the slides before you do that. And I will see you in the next module. Bye.